lot of excitement as we take a look at our starting lineups. LaPolo will run the point position for Stanford. She did not play in the first meeting on January 19th. Was out with the injury. You'll see Hannah jump to rely heavily on Jim. Tara making a statement. We're digging in and we're defending. Yep, exactly. That's exactly what she told us. Defense, so critical. And Imanopu, one of the best. One of those players you do not want to have to face up with. And there she is right there with the ball. We are underway. The Cardinal get the tip. Peely and Brink matched up for now. Kick around, a quick shot. That one just short from Imanopu. She can shoot it out, though, though, Mary. 43% three-point shooter. A new team that wants to get out in transition and see if they can get into their offense quickly. Peely tried to muscle it in, tried to draw the contact. No whistle. I love just taking it right at Brink early. Jones on the trail, drives it right. Didn't quite get the backboard to help her out. And now McQueen. McQueen's a dynamic presence. She can put it on the floor. She shoots the ball beautifully and moves so well without the basketball. Jenna Johnson, she's been playing so well as of late. How about the block there, though? The defense by the Cardinal. Imanopu. Tara Vanderveer called Haley Jones a warrior after the minutes that she put in in Boulder on Friday. 50 minutes, double overtime, and really carried the team in the overtime. And then you don't get to go to bed. You just get to <laughs> lay around the hotel at the uh, airport. Yeah, they had some tough travel, the Cardinal did, coming in. And tough travel, really an understatement. Oh, the help D is there. Jones takes another one away. Polo, ball fake, gets it. The Cardinal. A 5-0 start and some contact and a collision inside. Colorado played so well. The double overtime victory by Stanford and then the Odyssey began. <laughs> a plane cancellation, mechanical issues. You wait for another plane to come back after dropping off the USC team. And a red-hot offensive start from Stanford. As Imanopu trying to get the steal away from Palmer comes up with it. So you see why Imanopu is in the starting lineup. She's already knocked down a shot and there she gets a steal. Tara Vanderbilt loves her hustle and a jump. Cardinal have hit four of their last four shots. What a start for the number three team in the nation. Jenna Johnson, left corner good. Jenna Johnson has really been an unsung hero as of late now. Yeah, every single player on this team can really pick it up, and they don't get discouraged by getting in a deficit or not shooting the ball well because they're going to keep on playing. Peely, she can hit it and does. Couple three balls, and it's a three point game. Yeah, 9 0 to 9 6, just like that. Welcome, Utah offense, as good as anybody in the country. Lynn Roberts told us they have to hit some shots if they're going to have a chance against this Stanford team. And now a foul ball against the Cardinal. This is why. Peely is just so dominant. Her ability to trail plays, knock down threes. Foul on Brink. That is her first. And you hate when Brink gets fouls. Yep. That are trying to defend. Neepkins. Trying to get a little space. Trying to get away from Haley Jones. Roots having a tough time finding some openings. The defense has been hounding. Shot clock winding down. Izzy Palmer. The Cardinal need to stop this 8-0 Utah run. Betts gets double teamed. Jones in the high post. A little too much on it. And a box out by Young over the back. Difference maker for those seedings as far as which team needs to be there for that first round and which team can watch. Is that of the timeout? The shot from Young, no good. There really is nobody on this Utah team from beyond the arc that you want to give any time to get going. Yep, every single player can put it up out there. That's trying to work it into bets. Help from McQueen and the takeaway. Tremendous early help rotation from McQueen. Meepkins by herself. Can't get it. And the rebound down to Indian Navarre, who's checked in. 12 in black. Also, Elena Buzgana. 20 in black. Right there, the lefty. Left corner, no good. So Tara Vanderveer definitely bringing fresh bodies on and doing it early. Foul called on Hannah Jump. Just her first. Yes. First free throw is good for Kelsey Reese, 6'5 sophomore, out of Adelaide, Australia. 
course, her sister plays at Washington. Her parents were in yeah. Seattle a couple weeks ago for senior days. Yeah, might have been last weekend. Yep, pretty oh, special. Together. They made two trips over to the States this year to watch their daughters play. Well, this has happened all season long. They, they on fire, and then they slow down, and then they go back door. And Haley Jones can do that in her sleep at an airport in Denver if she needs to. Give her another assist in this one. That was Boscana with the backdoor cut. That's such a tough play to defend. It sure is. Even when you know it's going to happen, but still, so tough. Trying to get Peely some touches. She's trying to get some room. How did she do that? I just love her footwork because she knows exactly where she is and how to get that shot up without getting it blocked. Cardinal pushing some tempo. Uh, reach in foul on Peely. Watch her feet. She looks down. She knows where she is without looking up. And once she looks up, she knows how to deliver that. And Mary, she's so good with both hands. I mean, she finishes so well with the left hand. And she had to use her left hand on that one. As Leapkins is going to take a seat. And coming in, Lonnie White and Taya Sidberry, two freshmen for the youths, bring to the line. 62%. To 82 percent in one season, it is phenomenal what Cameron Brink has done and what she does defensively, what she's doing from the line. The improvements of her game have made a big difference. And a travel call on Sid Barry will send it the other way. How about Alyssa Peely though too? You know, we talked about should she be an All-American. Also, we've got some of the best talent across not only the conference but in the nation. There is no doubt those three are phenomenal. Napolo. Taking her time, finds jump, and she sticks it. Well, she could have taken that 15-foot jump shot, but here comes Hannah Jump, and really, her contribution is so important. When she hits double figures, Stanford wins. Yep, she'd already hit a couple of buckets. Lapolo decides to go to her. Seven points now for her as Palmer drives it in and draws some contact. Jump leading all scorers. Brink's going to get a rest as Palmer goes to the stripe. It's the first... Defensively, I think she's been a difference maker as well. Can't get the second. Utah, one of the best free throw shooting teams out there. Coming in 78% as a team as Jones tries to push tempo. And she gets fouled. Utes were happy, though. She was cleared to play Friday. And the first free throw a little bit short. 23 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. We talk about being integral yeah. to a huge win. Jump, cutting off the back. Door cut, under a minute left. High Archer rattles around. Young with the O board, another chance. Stanford, no box out. Second opportunity for Utah. Oh, oh Peely asking for it and gets it. And no hesitation. She knows exactly what to do. She just puts a clinic on in that low post every single game. Using her strength, and she used it there. Moving bodies around. And no hesitation on that shot, but can't quite get it. Bozgana, Sidberry with the board, a chance to cut in to the deficit, potentially maybe take the lead before the end of this first quarter. With McQueen and Neepkins on the bench getting a rest. That's a huge lift for Utah. Yeah, certainly is. Two freshmen on the floor right now. This is one of them. And off and biting that perimeter shot is Haley Jones because you got to bring that double to Peely. And they do. Sidberry, can't she hit it? Just misses. Young tries to save it. Can't get it. They wave it off. And that's going to do it for the first quarter of... They call her a problem, Mary. She's a problem for their team and, and to try to defend. Uh, she's got seven. Hannah Jump, seven for Stanford. As Ines Vieta has checked in to in red for the Utes. Second quarter underway. What a game. Cardinal already knowing they've got a share of the Pac-12 title. It's their 26th all-time. Really impressive. And Utah, it would be their first if they could get a W here. Mentis. Jones trying to get some space and gets fouled in the process. Brink pushing it up. Deep in the paint, off the mark. That's the point. Make her shoot over you. Don't give her that angle. Pick and roll. Peely. Oh, oh reverse. And gets that shooter's touch. Hello, Houdini. Oh, wow. 
The contortionist continues. But again, she just knows where she is and knows where she needs to go to make a shot. Yeah, that court awareness, but the footwork and the great hands. So if the Cardinal have an answer, they go to Brink, and Brink takes it in, and she draws the personal. They would love to get Alyssa Beely into some foul trouble. Here we go. Nope, I'm not going there. I'm going to go over here. Out of Anchorage, Alaska, the transfer from USC. I could watch her in the post all day long. Third personal, she comes out, and you said it. Kelsey Reese is going to have to play big today as Brink gets the first. That is a devastating foul for Utah. Yep. Cameron Brink to the stripe, the junior, Beaverton, Oregon, All-American, gets them both. And so she's probably one of the more uh, rested players for the Cardinal. This has got to be a game where they really get some open threes and they knock a lot of them down. Because Reese, just no comparison between what she can do in the post and what Alyssa Peely can do. And so far, Mary, it has not been easy. They have not had a lot of easy looks outside. Right there, though, Deja Young. Couldn't believe how open she was, I guess. Can't get it. Have to find other ways to score. Two points, Stanford lead. Hand off to jump. Mid-range jumper, good. Yeah, she's really starting to incorporate things that are going to pay off when she becomes a professional player. Hi, Arthur McQueen. And the Utes needed that one. Well, this is youth basketball. They've got to free themselves up and start heaving up some threes. First points of the game for Kennedy McQueen and an offensive foul call on the Cardinal. I can't wait to see her entire town in Salt Lake in uh, Las Vegas like we did last <laughs> week, uh, last year. Yep, certainly so. They bring them. Yada assessing. She had 13 starts on the season. To begin the year, Meekins just could not find a crease. Yeah, good defense by the Cardinal. They have really been in lockdown mode. Reese, ball fake, shot clock. Can she get it off? Yes, Reese with the finger roll. Again, you draw Brink back and give yourself a chance when you put it on the floor. Utes regain the lead. High post. You can see Brink come out and then attacks it in a little reverse finger roll. Live at large. Kelsey Reese. It's tied up with Cameron Brink. As the fans watch the uh, replay. <laughs> they play on. Oh, yeah. Back up to the two-point lead. Neepkins guarded by Lapolo. Neepkins a little more length as she takes it in. And she gets fouled. She'll go to the line. Neepkins has played 10 minutes and just hasn't gotten anything going. No points, no rebounds, and they need her. So second personal on Cameron Brink. Stanford can survive foul trouble with Brink more than Utah can survive foul trouble from yep. Peely. The number one recruit in the nation is really gaining confidence from Tara Vanderbeer. She's starting to, it's starting to click. You know, Tara said, look, it takes a while for the freshman to really get it. And you're playing behind some of these other players, but she is really starting to get it. Double figures five of the last six games. Yeah. Jones guarded by Young. And a little too aggressive on the drive, they'll say. It's a good call. You can see Haley Jones just kind of lower the shoulder and lower the boom. Queen's got to take that 15-footer. You can't keep just trying to find something inside when it's not there. Vieta, too much. I don't think it caught the iron. They'll, they'll stop things. I don't think it did. And they reset the shot clock. Cardinal with four seniors, that funky four, Tara calls them. What a group they've been. The number two recruit class in the nation coming there in. There you have it. Meekins, just enough space. And the lead back to the Utes. It's their largest of the ball game. Peely's been out three and a half minutes, and not only has Utah kept it close, they had taken the lead. Betts. Gets it done at the other end. Here's the shot. Yep, right there, and she took it. Came around and sticks it. 
And you can feel that pace offensively in the perimeter for Utah. Just pop, screen, pop, come to the ball, want, to, want the shot. Went out with the ACL last year in the Pac-12 tournament. Did not play yeah. in the championship game against Stanford and fighting her way back into shape. And boy, does, does Utah need her today? Boy, they certainly do as Belibi on the inbound gets the layup good. Stanford back within one. Yeah, McFarland's really been working her way back. I mean, that was the quarterfinal of the tournament last year, so not so long ago with the knee injury. Matched up with Bats. Here's McQueen. She gets fouled shooting the three. We're starting to get a vibe of tournament time here today in this one with this amazing crowd. It's everything she does for this squad. Yeah, gets them all. How about the Cardinal? Second in the nation in blocks per game. Seven per game. Making that extra pass and making them pay. Hannah Jump with another three. She gave up a good shot for a great shot in the corner. What a game by Hannah Jump. Yeah, Lapolo capable, 39% three-point shooter. It's a big numbers. You don't know what that means. I'm going to tell you, as Lynn Roberts talking over what she wants from Peyton McFarlane, who's probably going to have some sig significant minutes. You just have to be ecstatic over on the Utah bench to survive this long with no Alyssa Peely on the floor. These teams met up back at Stanford on January 19th, and it was a fairly close one, and then Stanford finally taking control, but they got the 75-68 win over the Utes. The Utah was in it in that game. As that went off the mark, McQueen... Gets caught from behind, and Hannah Jump does not agree. Shot goes up. Jump trying to get it, and you can see her come down on the right arm, on the left arm of McQueen with her right arm. <laughs> Second foul for her. Bonus for the Utes. Around and down, and McQueen and begging that one to go. From the perimeter, and she's one for two is McQueen. The rebound to down. The Cardinal wanting to push some tempo, and too much on it in the bar. Just five for Utah. And Utah taking 10 points and potentially to try to add here off those turnovers as Meekins got clipped. A twisty move inside. Boy, just trying to make something out of nothing. The foul on Erie often. And the first free throw for Neepkins. Good. Gianna Neepkins. I'm getting my days mixed up. I forgot. We started this week on Thursday. Today is Saturday. We're one of the best shot blocking teams in the nation. Oh, Brechtel. What a great look. pass. Oh, inside and one. The freshman out of Apex, North Carolina. And can't get the three point play. A little scrum inside. She gets the rebound. And the floater, though, no good for Bosgana. You know, Tara Vanover talks so much about these other pieces. You know, she knows she has Hannah Jump. You got Haley Jones. You got Cameron Brink. There's a couple other spots. She's weaving so many players in, and so many have been stepping up. And today, more than ever, has needed that depth. Deja Young from deep. And overcompensating. Oh, McQueen. Neepkins. Oh, my oh, goodness. come on. There's snow on that ball as it comes down. <laughs> The crowd loving it. Oh, that is all a shooter's touch. Prechtel. Oh, and she gets fouled. And Ziri Offens back on. Prechtel to the line. Misses the first. Oh, and Prechtel again. Stanford was up two when Alyssa Peely got her third personal foul. And instead of hurting them, it has fueled them. One for three for Ashton Prechtel. As the clock is winding down, and Palmer launches it up. So know this, the two biggest, de the biggest deficit of the season for Stanford was six at Colorado on Thursday night. It is six again here this afternoon in Salt Lake City. Take away by McQueen. Stanford went on a 20 to eight third quarter in Boulder. And again, the game in Stanford back in January was pretty close in the first half. It was a very big third quarter for the Cardinal as Peely in the high post. Pretty. I, I love the strategy. If she's in foul trouble while she's on the floor, get her as many touches as you can. Now well, you got her in there. Brink tries to clean up the miss. 
Kimmerbrink has not made a field goal yet to get her points and get some bump. Johnson in the gap. Sticks at Jenna Johnson. Defensively, and she's been able to get some scoring as well. Brink, they'll call it for her. Tara Vanderveer does not agree. But one of those that if it goes the other way, Peely's got her fourth. Yep, that is her third. She will take a seat. Ariathan back on. Jenna Johnson, pick and roll. There they go. They beat Oklahoma here 124 to 78. <laughs> yep. We thought they would be good. We uh, were a bit surprised on that one as well. Johnson gets a tip on that one. Erie off and tries to clean it up. Fran Belibi, third time's the charm. Quick passing Belibi on Johnson. Needs some help. Peely behind the arc, left corner. Can't get it in. It's Belibi with the board. Hart will try to push. Brink back inside. Works it around. Gets the touch. Stanford able to cut four points off that 11 point lead. When Mary Brink's first field goal of the game as Meekins drives the baseline. Brink with eight points. It's just brilliant the way she used her body in the baseline on that and squared to the backboard. I mean, that's just old school. 14 for Meekins. Jump. Trying to use the screen for the three and the air ball. Brink finally gets her first basket. Eight points. Six of the eight from the free throw line. Kelsey Reese with the screen up high and a high arc for Swish. This team plays with such pace, shoots so many threes, moving into the starting lineup, running the points, and Junior taking that role and just does a little of everything, but there's Brink splitting the D. Uh, she was communicating with her teammates to give me the ball. As McQueen tries to scoop it up, Brink right there to swat it. She's going to bring it all the way. Out to jump. Sticks it. Johnson on the baseline. Brink right there, knocks it off of her. <laughs> Big D, and she's fired up. She is. Brink inside. Haley Jones has sat for a lot of this yep. basketball game. Played 50 minutes on Thursday night. Yeah. And others step up for her. Brink, it's tipped to her. And trying to get the put back. Foul on Reese, that's her fourth. She'll take a seat. Alyssa Peely back on. Vieta back on. And Cameron Brink continues to control the free throw line. Just made a world of difference when you can have one of your best players on the floor at crunch time, and she is making a huge difference as Stanford continues to try to scratch and claw their way back into this ball. Neepkins. Trying to create some contact, but just keeps that train going that direction and can just keep it together enough till she draws it. And how sweet would this one be? That would be a big one. But a little bit of an adventure for Stanford to play so many minutes without Haley Jones. Yep. That one won't go. Long rebound. Another chance for Stanford. Job on the O boards. Dimitri, a great shooter. Young guarding her. Brink in the high post. Shot clock was winding down to Dimitri. Sticks it. And one of the best shooting lineups they can put on the floor out there. Dimitri makes the count. Brooke Dimitri, the sophomore at 6'3 with the length behind the arc. Back at you, says Neepkins. You know, there's not many shooters where you literally lift your head up and watch it as it goes from her hands in the air and then just falls into the basket. It's a high arcer. It is. <laughs> Oh, and the D helping down. The Utes thought they got the steal. Instead, it's a foul call. It's better that they gave it to Neepkin no than to give it to Beely, obviously, for Utah's sake. But it's a physical play inside. Ah, uh, the pick back. That weak side glass. Great play by Navarre. Navarre making her impact felt. 
bring to the court. She stays down. Neepkin's going to push tempo. Well, she's not, she doesn't fear contact. She makes great decisions. And she gets herself to the free throw line. She can knock down threes. 41% from three. And an 84% free thrower, but only one to two from that go. Jump. Oh, uh, rattles that one in. Cardinal within two. Peely trying to get some room instead. Help D coming over Navar. Gonna push. And McQueen with a takeaway. And Peely with a diving save and help. Wow. Navar's hurt. She's yeah. holding her lower back. Yeah, she landed hard. Watch McQueen. Dig it out. Dig it out. Dig it out. And then who gets on the floor? Peely. And somehow just throws that thing ahead. And McQueen with the finish. Big difference for her game since she came to Utah. Lynn Roberts here. It was so important to get her on the move more and not just sit her in on the block. And Deja Young. Jones on the drive. The and one. Haley Jones muscles it up. Can't get the three-point play. That foul on Jenna Johnson. Mary, her fourth. Johnson for Palmer four. Foul trouble piling up both ways. Tough pass. Well played by Hannah Jump. Yeah, right where she needed to be. Tara calling the play. Clock ticking down. Cardinal, can they tie it or take the lead back before this fourth quarter gets started? Jump. Quick shot. Not enough under it. She's made five. So yeah. I any opportunity you can get her to take a shot, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'd give her the ball. Bealey puts it up, stacks it. Oh, that gets this crowd into it. How many big shots with time running down? Should she be an All-American? I, I mean, that should be an eek, not pencil. Yep, she's absolutely on the watch list. And... Uh, for good reason. I mean, those her numbers and what she's doing, the difference she's making, saying it all. Fourth quarter underway. Help D from Meekins, and she gets the takeaway. Just so important to just collapse on Brink. Don't let her dominate the low post. And they've done an amazing job of that. Bonnie White gets the start this quarter. So does Vieta. And Deja Young. It's a little different look to start this quarter for Utah. Shot clock winding down. Neepkins in the paint. Again, a hard drive. Lower the shoulder. In a single high school game, had 67 points. But she's absolutely so much more than that. Marshall High School in Minnesota. That's right. Class president. Jones up top. Calling out the play. Skip across. Jump corner Stay. makes them pay. She's got 24. Six of nine behind the arc. Beely jump tried to come over. Help side. White left corner. Hits it. How about that? The freshman gives up one to Hannah Jump. It comes right back in your face. And Lonnie White getting more and more confident in her freshman season. Oh, the that's what, that's what she does so well, doesn't she? She gets low to the ground and just takes away those bounce passes. Uh, she stayed low and got the takeaway. Vieta, the sophomore out of Portugal. Oh, the chess match with Alyssa Peely and Cameron Brink. They are fun to watch. Now in the low post. Peely asking for it. Reads the D. Fakes one way. Goes the other. Got the shot off. Lonnie White. There to clean it up. Everybody forgot about her. Hey, freshman, we see you working. Jones guarded by Neepkins up high in the back cut. The bar. Oh, and she Jesus ran right into yeah. her, yeah. The queen. Blocked by Hannah Jones. Jumped out with a piece of that one. So they made a change to the call here. So it was tipped by Jump, and when it went out of play, so off of her, it goes back to Utah. 
Neepkins gets herself set, sticks it. Nothing but net. I'm starting to believe here in Salt Lake City. Every time Stanford makes a run. Yeah, they've had an answer, and the Cardinal have definitely punched several times this quarter. They're going right back in it. Lapolo on the drive is good. Using the high screen, takes it inside and tosses it out. Shot clock down to three. Deja Young, not enough under it. Damn, that's good D by the Cardinal. Yep, they have to believe it. Lynn Roberts coming into this one, she said, I told the team, they have to beat us also. We have to have that mindset that it's not just us beating them. They have to beat us. When you have McQueen, when you have Neepkins, Jenna Johnson, and Alyssa Peely, you got a group that believes. One too many passes for the Cardinal as McQueen couldn't get it to go. Vieta couldn't get it to go. Wow. I know people watch and go, how can you miss a layup? We've all missed layups we shouldn't have missed. Sometimes you just think too much. Yep. There's a little extra added pressure on a play like that when the defense is coming after you. And in a game like this. Good recovery by Peely to Dimitri. Lukens on Jones, a high screen from Dimitri. Jones not stopping. Haley Jones with the bucket. Big bucket. Five points for her. 13 on the season she averages as Deja Young takes it in and gets fouled. Six boards, three assists. And we told the story during the pregame show just about how a, a Lyft driver started talking about women's basketball with me on the way up to the arena. It's yeah. different. People care. People are paying attention. Your Lyft driver, he was jealous that you were going to the game, I think. High oh, low, quick yeah. bucket. But can Stanford get stops? They've had a lot of trouble with that. Neep ends using the screen, too much on it. He got one there. Utah, oh, for the last jump by, it is open. Jones, willing it. That is the, the right word, Krista. Absolute the will of a champion, and that is Haley Jones. Is it Peely time? Oh, spins it up. Cannot finish. Three-point game. Two and a half remaining. Brink, help D. Swings it up. Sticks it. Cameron Brink with 14. Close as it's been since 57-55, and Lynn Roberts takes a very needed timeout. Utah needs a bucket. They have been on a major scoring drought. Over four minutes. Elevator yeah. delivers. Call the timeout. Draw up the play. The player best shooter coming through that strong elevator. We're not letting anyone through the door. Just under two minutes left in the game. Crowd starting to make some noise. Brink and Peely. Oh, Brink, pretty. Oh, and it doesn't fall. It did everything but drop in. What a move. The box out by Peely, possession Utah. Have you ever heard this in a women's game? <laughs> Occasionally in the, in the distance, but right now they're right up on us as Jenna Johnson The quiet assassin for the Utes gets fouled and who makes the pass? Alyssa Peely Jenna Johnson in the first meeting had just four points, but 12 rebounds and five of them offensive Sometimes when the offense isn't really clicking for her, averaging 12 a game on the season Just one for two Brink gets the rebound her 12th board of the game. Apollo. 15th foul for Utah. That is a good thing for the Cardinal. Group Dimitri at the free throw line. And the first free throw good. The sophomore out of Fidel Ranch, California. Struggled a bit at Colorado. Was one of seven behind the arc. A much more solid game today. And one for two from the stripe as Neepkins fell down. The rebound to the Cardinal. Huge board. 
opportunity for Stanford. Yeah, they were really taking their time getting organized. First time a six seed's ever made it to the championship game. Remaining in the ball game. Shot clock winding down on the takeaway by McQueen. Another steal for Kennedy McQueen, and Stanford is going to foul. Solana Lapolo back on for the Cardinal. McQueen to the strike. She's got nine points today. And the first free throw, no good. And the building gets so quiet. It's like the oxygen just gets sucked out of it. Gets the second. Two possession game and another takeaway this time. Jenna Johnson with the defense. And Palmer trying to get away. Stanford needs everything to go right. You're down five. Highest attendance since the 2000 season. Oh, too much time. Too much yep. time. You're right. Foul. Reminds you of that football game earlier this year. Was it against USC when they had just that enormous? The whole town yeah. was rocking. And Izzy Palmer, Coleman Pool at the free throw line. With 10,000 people staring down at her. And loving it. Gets them both. Palmer, nine or eight points, excuse me. Haley Jones brings it up. Offensive foul call. It's He's going the other way. Lynn Roberts. Stanford knows they're the champs. But this year, they might be sharing it. Well, they have solidified the one seed for the Pac-12 tournament. What a job by Deja Jones. Who do you want to guard? Haley? Cameron? She's up for anybody. And so a tough one for Haley Jones. Finishes the game, fouls out of this one, but what effort she's had on this tough, tough road trip to finish off the conference season. Won the one they had to have yep. to get the championship, and that was Thursday night in a, just a hard-fought double OT victory yeah. over Colorado. Yeah, great point. Neat pins will go to the line. Deja Young, it looks like, will come back on when she can. And she gets the first 27 points for Neepkins. The most anybody has scored against Stanford this year, 76 points, and that was South Carolina. You look at the scoreboard, Utah, 82 points. Uh, the officials, there's a question mark on the inbound, and they'll have to check the clock now. Well, it certainly takes time as... Neepkins is trying to get this crowd to make some noise. Prechtel into Betts. Betts with the left hand good. We saw her a lot early in the game. We didn't really see her late. And full court pressure from the Cardinal. You know, Stanford's won a lot of Pac-12 regular season championships. A lot of them. Utah has not. This is one of those once-in-a-lifetime experiences. Absolutely. Entering the Pac-12 2012 season. Seven-time Mountain West champs. But after moving into the Pac-12, hadn't been close. Well, Kyle Winningham with football has shown everyone how to do it. And Lynn Roberts just following right in those footsteps. Yep, it's taken her a little while, but she's pieced together the kind of team she's wanted to see in her eight seasons as the head coach. And there's one more accolade she can add to the list, and that is Pac-12 regular season co-champ with...